when a vehicle arrives at the dealership with a low power complaint, it's always a cause for concern. And when the complaint is about a Dodge Ram pickup with a Cummins diesel engine, it seems particularly important to find the cause. That's because the Cummins equipped Ram pickup has established a reputation as a tough, hard-working truck, one that customers can depend on to haul or tow heavy loads. Welcome to this month's Master Tech. In this release, we're going to discuss Cummins diesel engine performance. We'll start by discussing inherent differences in engine design and the effect on performance. Next, we'll look at confirming a low power complaint and items to check during road testing. Following that, we'll discuss some possible causes of low power, including causes related to the air induction system, the throttle linkage, fuel delivery system, and fuel injection. And finally, the engine and transmission. Before we get into these causes, though, let's look at some characteristics of the Cummins diesel engine and their effect on performance. When trying to resolve low power complaints on trucks equipped with Cummins diesel engines, it's important to first make sure a problem actually exists. The Cummins diesel is designed to provide a lot of torque, especially at lower RPM. This low-end torque translates to pulling and towing power. The low-end torque results to a large extent from the Cummins diesel undersquare design. That is, the stroke is large in comparison to the bore, resulting in greater leverage or force at the crankshaft. Compare, for example, the bores and strokes of some gas engines to that of the Cummins diesel. The Cummins clearly has the longest stroke in comparison to its bore. Now look at the torque curve for a Cummins diesel engine that is mated to a manual transmission. Notice that peak torque occurs at around 1600 RPM. A typical gas engine's peak torque occurs at around 2500 to 3000 RPM. Because of the undersquare design, the Cummins diesel trades power that would provide better acceleration at higher speeds for low end torque. An additional factor in Cummins diesel performance is that diesel engines typically operate efficiently at a lower RPM range than gas engines. And other factors being equal, the higher RPM at which an engine can operate, the better the acceleration. The trade-offs become more obvious when you compare a tractor trailer with a passenger car. The tractor trailer obviously cannot keep up with the passenger car. And the passenger car obviously can't pull the trailer. Now, just because the Cummins diesel provides a lot of low-end torque doesn't mean you can carry or pull anything. There is a limit to its pulling power. A chart in this month's reference book spells out the limits. So how do you decide that a truck equipped with a Cummins diesel engine is providing a customer with low power? One way is to clock 0 to 60 mile per hour performance and compare it to a list of maximum acceptable times. These times vary according to model and have been established only for trucks with automatic transmissions. You'll find them in this month's reference book, as well as in TSB 182995, Revision A. Before running the test, it's a good idea to connect the DRB3 to the Datalink connector. Having the scan tool on hand will allow you to conveniently check such items as idle speed, and wide open throttle shift points during your test drive. We'll discuss the significance of these items later in the program. With a truck at curb weight, make at least two zero to 60 mile per hour runs in opposite directions and record the times. Times that are less than or equal to the times in the chart indicate performance that is within specifications. In these cases, you may need to inform customers of some factors that can affect their perception of performance and top speed. For example, a higher numerical axle ratio may cause customers to feel an unloaded truck is accelerating more strongly at lower speeds. On the other hand, if a truck with a high numerical axle ratio is at maximum load and being driven into a headwind on the highway, the ratio will limit top speed. If the 0 to 60 times exceed those in the chart, you'll need to investigate the truck for a low power complaint. The checks you'll need to make are the subject of the next part of this program. Before we turn to those, however, try answering this review question. 
The term for an engine in which the stroke exceeds the bore is A, understroke, B, underboard, or C, under square. The answer is C, under square. The under square design is a primary factor that provides the Cummins diesel with its low end torque. In this part of the program, we're going to look at checks you'll need to make to resolve low power complaints. These checks are organized according to system, not necessarily according to sequence. However, along the way, we'll be pointing out which checks should be performed early in the diagnosis. The first possible causes we'll look at are related to the air induction system, those parts responsible for getting air into the cylinders. Checks for restrictions or blockage between the air inlet and turbocharger are relatively easy to do and should be covered early in the diagnosis. Start with the air filter. If you use the filter miter to check for restriction in the air filter, you won't have to open up the air filter housing and take the chance of debris entering the system. If the yellow disc in the filter miter has reached the red zone, the filter may be clogged. If the filter is dirty, after resetting the filter minder and changing the filter, be sure to inform the customer that the filter minder needs to be checked monthly. Keep in mind that the filter minder can indicate a clogged filter because of temporary conditions, such as snow blocking the air inlet or a wet air filter. Besides a blocked inlet or clogged or wet filter, restriction in airflow can also occur due to collapsed or kinked tubing and foreign objects in the air supply. When inspecting the air induction system, don't forget to check the outside of the intercooler for restrictions to airflow. Without the heat exchange that the intercooler provides, the turbocharger will not be able to pack as much air into the cylinders, which may affect power output. Also check the connections on the tubing which runs from the turbocharger to the intercooler and from the intercooler to the intake manifold. A leak will reduce turbo boost and power. The turbocharger and the wastegate are not usually in themselves a cause of low power and should be examined after your checks of more likely causes, such as the throttle linkage and fuel delivery system. The turbocharger wastegate is set at the factory and will not ordinarily need to be adjusted However, it's a good idea to check the adjustment once you've explored the more common causes of low power. To check the wastegate, connect an air pressure source you can regulate and monitor the pressure on to the wastegate actuator. Install a dial indicator on the wastegate control rod to measure rod movement. On 1996 engines equipped with an automatic transmission, apply 19 PSI to the actuator. On 1996 engines equipped with manual transmissions, apply 28 PSI. With the correct air pressure applied, the control rod travel should be between 0.013 and 0.052 inches. A setting in the lower part of this range will yield optimum performance. To adjust a control rod that is not within specs, maintain air pressure on the actuator so there is no spring tension on the lever. Next, remove the control rod from the wastegate lever. Then, after loosening the jam nut, adjust the end of the control rod to line up with the lever when it is in the closed position. Do not allow the control rod to rotate in the wastegate actuator. After tightening the jam nut and reinstalling the lever, be sure to recheck the adjustment. Next, we're going to look at fuel system related causes of low power right after another review question.